So a little bonus content here on uh, serial killing and using criminal profiling. Uh, and that is looking at the trail side killer. Um, this was a guy uh, committed a series of murders in the late 70s uh, into 1980 uh, around San Francisco. And uh, trail side killer, obviously, because the murders all took place in parks and along trails. And you can see I have here a video, I made a picture of uh, San Francisco, and you can just see all the green areas where there are parks. And specifically, um, the first uh, body was found in San Francisco in Mount Tamal, Tamal Pai. I, say, I think I'm saying that right, probably not. Um, and let's let's see what's, what went on. And Ida Kane, who is 44 years old, was found dead. She'd gone out hiking um, on her own. She was found face down in a kneeling position. And that's going to become a little bit of a signature, but it's not totally consistent, as you'll see. Um, found in a kneeling position. Uh, single gunshot wound to the back of the head. Again, that's kind of a little bit of his MO, modus operandi. So keep a watch on that. But there will be some differences um, in some of the cases. Uh, there was no evidence of sexual assault. No robbery. All right, uh, the trail site killer. Let's see what happens next. Uh, March 1980, so a few months later, a second victim is found, Barbara Schwartz, 23, out hiking on her own, stabbed in the chest, was naked in a kneeling position. So, like, there's that signature. You're like, wait a second, this might be connected. Although the modus operandi in terms of stabbing versus uh, uh, a gunshot wound is different. Um, just a few months later, uh, you notice the cooling off period here, all this coming together. Uh, Ann Alderson, 26 years old, uh, was found shot in the head, but not naked and not kneeling. So some similarities, but different. Still within the same park, still within the same park, though, which is, again, uh, a pretty commonality here with this. Uh, another murder in the same park, Shauna May, 25. All of these women, by the way, are by themselves in a park. And uh, in this one, she's found in a shallow grave. Uh, the difference here is that she's actually, in, I'm sorry, she's actually in a different park, Mount Wittenberg, Mount Reyes National Seashore, which is near the uh, park we talked about earlier. As a matter of fact, you can see here what it looks like in the photograph. Um, and that is actually Shauna May, the photograph that I was able to find. Uh, next to her was Diana um, O'Connell. So they actually found another body near Shauna May, and she had been missing for over a month. And so they found a second um, victim at the same location. Both were shot in the head. So we're seeing shot in the head as a modus operandi uh, pretty significantly here in this case. Uh, Richard Stowers, uh, 19, and fiance Cynthia Moorhead in 1980 were, were out hiking. Um, and they were also found in that same park determined to have been killed the same weekend as Ann Anderson sometime in mid-October. And so another murder here, two people this time. And this is the first male victim. Obviously, this woman was with the male. Um, and, and you can see here that as this has gone on, uh, the serial murderer has become uh, more brazen. Uh, next, we're we, we another park becomes the location of a murder. And this is the Henry Cowell Redwoods State Park, again, near San Francisco. And uh, Ellen Marie Hansen, who's 20, and Steve Hurdle, um, who's with her. Uh, uh, Steve was not in present for a few minutes. And uh, this guy ran up and threatened to rape Ellen. Um, he ended up shooting and killing her when she protested. Um, Stephen fought off the guy, came and fought, her, fought off the guy. He was shot but ended up surviving. Um, he was left for dead, but he survived, and he's able to give a description of the man. Uh, in came FBI profiler, who we talked about in an early lesson, John Douglas. Um, and John Douglas has a profile here. He says, well, one, the crime teams are in secluded areas that are only accessible by foot. What does that tell you? What's the profile here? The, comfort, the killer was comfortable in the area. He's a local. He knows these parks. So he's feeling good about it. So he's not, he's, he's, he's from this area. Um, the victims are all attacked um, in some sort of real, rear bullet style attack. So they're getting hit in the back of the head. They're being stabbed from behind. Um, this, he, pro, he said, must mean that the killer is asocial. He's not able to charm his victims with conversation. 
Um, the bliss style attack is the only way he could control his victims. You know, if he could have a conversation with them and be charming, then he wouldn't need to do this blitz style attack from behind. The victims aged in, in uh, ranged in age and appearance, um, which meant that the killer didn't know his victims. He's acting out some twisted fantasy. Um, victims were all white, meaning the killer was white. Remember, most murders in our uh, in, in our country happen among the same race. Um, he's able to evade police, meaning that he's probably in his low to mid thirties. Um, the chances that he had maybe spent some time in jail, possibly had attempted rape, probably some sort of blue collar work. Um, that was the the thought process. By the way, notice there's a kind of a mix here. We're seeing a lot of disorganized aspects, some organized aspects. Uh, so you know, this is the profile. Probably very intelligent. That's the organized side. Not a random act. Probably there was some precipitating stressor. He got upset about something. So we're looking for someone who just had some sort of job issue, and that's what helped cause this. Um, probably has a history of bedwetting, fire starting, and or cruelty to animals as a child. Um, more on that in a second. And likely has a speech impediment, hence why he can't charm them. Um, he wanted to be secluded, didn't want to be seen, and he relied on overpowering the victim which indicated disability, but unlikely it was physical, but was it because he was able to control the victim. So who was the trailside killer? And it was David Carpenter. You can see here, um, he was a white male, 50 years old. So the profile of the age was a little off. He was a little older than they thought. He was an industrial arts teacher, which by the way means he probably didn't go to like proper college he actually had, you know, it was like a wood carpenter or something and went in and taught the class. Um, so he had some skills, a history of attacking women, and he had served jail time at some point. He had actually done that. He had a domineering and abusive mother. He had done bedwetting and cruelty to animals as a child. By the way, this fit with what was called the McDonald triad, um, that he killed and hurt animals as a child, that he had had a fire starting history and bedwetting patch age 12. That's the McDonald triad. And uh, that was true of the trailside killer. He actually had a couple of those um, common traits of people that are serial murders. Uh, BTK, BTK killer Dennis Rader enjoyed binding, torturing, and killing animals as a child. And then eventually that led to him doing it to humans. And then uh, David Carpenter as well had a severe stutter. So you could see that the profile fit really well. All right, great. That's your bonus uh, trailside killer. Uh, profile and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.